We can all agree that diesel engines today are a lot more troublesome than they were yesterday. And a lot of that has to do with the emission stuff. And I want to do a video on this because this is kind of like a forum. I wanted to show you guys some information I found on diesel engines. I've always known diesel engines as either IDI or DI. And if you don't know, today these diesels are direct injection. In the past, diesel engines were indirect injection. Now in this video, I'm gonna discuss that a little bit and I'm gonna answer the question, should these diesels go back to indirect injection? But before we do that, I gotta give a shout out to these dealers because they let me borrow their trucks to do this video and they're both available. So Tim Powell's at the Ford store here. This is a F350. I think I did a video on this truck actually too. It's a Lariat with the trimmer package. It is available for sale. I'll put his information down below. Now, if you want to see pricing, here is the MSRP. Yes, it's very, very, very expensive. And it has just about every option you can get on it. Let's go ahead and check out that Chevy. I recently did a video on this truck. This is Jerry Signer Chevrolet here in Salt Lake City. This truck is also available. And you won't see the window sticker, but I'll just call it out. $97,945 has the 8V Bison package on it, gooseneck, power running boards as you can see. So if you want to go back and look at these videos, just go back through my channel and you'll probably see this one for sure. That one's probably, probably a month ago I would say. But let's go ahead and jump into the video and talk about how do we combat buildup in the combustion. Now most of you know that these trucks have exhaust gas recirculation so you see these pipes here that is pretty much a part of that system on the Ford truck and here it is for the GM truck right here this is the exhaust gas recirculation I had a blue Ram truck to bring today so I could have red white and blue unfortunately I couldn't find the keys to the blue Ram truck and that was the only one they had so I was gonna do American theme here but nevertheless the Ram has EGR too. Now let's go ahead and talk about what causes deposit buildup in diesel engines. So I'm gonna be reading off of fleetequipmentmag.com and here's how it starts off. It says carbon deposit buildup on diesel engine components such as piston heads, fuel injectors, and intake valves is a bigger problem than it is for gasoline engines. There's a federal requirement that certain detergents be added to gasoline at the refinery itself, but there is no such mandate for adding detergents to diesel fuel. For this and many other reasons, diesel engines are more susceptible to carbon deposit buildup. Most of the blame, however, has been assigned to the fact that the fuel spray from a diesel injector goes directly into the cylinder bypassing for example the back of the intake valve where deposits are likely to form the increasing use of high pressure common rail fuel systems have also increased engine deposits other reasons for diesel engine carbon deposits are the use of low quality fuel short cold weather trips excessive idling and frequent oil changes and even dirty air filters now most of you guys remember the video I did on fuel dilution. I was aware of fuel dilution, but I did not know how much it really affected the engine oil. So let's talk about that for a second. You're telling me that your engine oil could actually build up carbon in the engine? I wasn't aware of that. So let's talk about that for a second. It says here, oil affects carbon buildup in the engine in the following ways, lubrication, cleaning, worn rings, contamination, and performance impacts. So let's start with lubrication first. It says here that fresh oil helps lubricate engine components, reduce friction, and carry away contaminants, including carbon particles. Engine oil also acts as a cleaning agent, helping to remove some carbon particles. Worn rings, oil-based carbon can build up when piston rings become worn, allowing oil to leak past the rings from the crankcase. There it is. Contamination, neglected oil changes, or low quality oil can lead to carbon accumulation, heat and debris. Contaminated oil increases friction, heat and debris accumulation with the engine. And then performance impact, obviously, that goes without saying, right? So yes, when you think about your engine oil, it's the same thing with fuel dilution. You're supposed to change your engine oil. Everything goes back to maintenance, right? If we are looking to spend 
$97,000 or $98,000 on a truck, maintenance is key because if you have to replace an engine, it's gonna cost you close to $30,000. Let's talk about IDI and DI engines for a second. So it says here, direct injection and indirect injection are two different methods of injecting fuel into a diesel engine. It says here, direct injection fuel is injected directly into the cylinder above the piston. So you guys heard earlier in this video that basically when the fuel is injected directly into the combustion, what happens is that fuel misses the intake valves. And so there's a chance that carbon buildup, not a chance, carbon buildup will actually build up on those intake valves. So there's really no way of cleaning those. So in some of these articles that I've read about uh, carbon buildup, one thing that they say is if you use a additive for the diesel engine, that's gonna help clean. Now, obviously, yes, it will clean part of the engine, it's not going to clean those intake valves because there's no spray going that way. So that's something I want to talk about too. I use a fuel additive for my diesel engine, but not for cleaning. Um, I do it for more lubrication more than anything else because I want to make sure that fuel system gets obviously lubricated. Here in America, the engines that we have use a ultra low sulfur diesel, I believe. That's what it's called. I'll actually show it to you on the on the fuel cap door because it's over there. And because of that, they took away the sulfur, which means the fuel doesn't have as much lubrication as it had before that. If you were to go to Europe, their diesel standards are far higher than ours. Just like they said earlier in that article that I read, gasoline here in the United States is really good. See, gas engines is the way to go because you can get ethanol-free gas and if you get a 73 ford or a 66 lat you don't have to necessarily run a premium fuel in those engines but if you can get a hold of a ethanol free fuel you're going to be able to keep that engine a lot cleaner and if you want to run premium fuel that's going to obviously help too because typically you get more detergents with the premium fuel from what i've read online now the way that an indirect injection engine works is fuel is injected into a small pre-chamber connected to the cylinder via a narrow passage that enters the pre-chamber tangentially. <laughs> I don't know how to say that word. In other words, indirect. So even if the manufacturer were to go back to IDI, that would not solve anything for carbon buildup because no fuel reaches the intake valves in an IDI engine and the fuel is injected into the pre-cup after the intake valve. So yes, even with that being said, that will not fix our problem. But here's what I do know. One of the ways you can actually help clean out your diesel engine from deposit buildup is by using a meth injection system. Now. You guys know Josh over at Truck Stuff. He's gonna be doing a video similar to mine, so I'm kinda of setting the stage for that video. And then he's gonna give you guys pretty much the meat and potatoes and the deeper dive in it. But what he said to me, and he's gonna explain it a lot better than I can, he said basically when you spray water, like the meth injection into the combustion of the engine, when that hits that carbon, that carbon basically shatters. So that basically helps with cleaning out the engine now i don't have a company that i recommend because i'm just going off of what he told me number one and number two and some of the benefits that i saw online which i'm going to read to you right now i'm on a website that does show some benefits for water and meth injection so i wanted to go ahead and read just really one of them to you it says here decreased emissions increased combustion efficiency means less particulate matter and NOx emissions so that pretty much plays into what Josh had told me which was anytime you add that cooler water meth whatever to the combustion it basically shatters the carbon in the uh, combustion there and that's going to help act as a cleaning agent it does say here too combustion conditioning so the methanol acts as a combustion catalyst as well as a cooling agent so yeah pretty much it, that cooler uh, water meth injection will help to get that combustion clean now before I end the video as you guys heard earlier if you're gonna get a diesel engine 
these engines are not as fun to own as they were 25 years ago. 25 years ago, I remember these engines were just, they were loud, they put out a little bit of black smoke sometimes, and they just were true diesel trucks. Today, they're neutered by the entire exhaust system with the SCR DPF, the DEF system sprays in, and when you smell out the back of that tailpipe, it smells like water almost. And of course, as you heard earlier, the exhaust gas recirculation. Now, the engine back then did have some emissions, but not to the extreme of what they have today. And so, if you plan on buying a truck like this, you need to really drive this thing. Like, you have to get it up to those 50 plus miles an hour. You have to stay there for 30 minutes. You have to put them under load, which is really the primary reason why you buy a diesel engine anyways. If you're buying a diesel engine, you really need to put it under load. I mean, I have a chance to tow one or two of my trailers every month and I can do it for about an hour because of where I go. So it's just good to keep these engines under load or just keep them on the highway for at least 30, 45 minutes. That way the engine can you know, have a clean burn with the fuel. See, the reason why I use fuel additive because it does raise that cetane number too. So it helps with the efficiency of the engine and the burn of the fuel too. So you wanna get the best burn. So make sure when you are getting your fuel, getting it from a reputable place or a place that turns it often, that's very, very important. Also, you wanna run a fuel additive for the lubricity effect too. So that way you can lubricate that fuel system. And I think that if you're someone that's not willing to do all this you should just get a gas truck for sure now in the next video that i do on this topic josh actually showed me a process at the dealership that he uses to not only clean the combustion but it also does clean out the egr as well you know once you get 50,000 miles on these engines you're gonna have build up even when you take apart an engine on a uh ram truck for example the cummins when you look at like where the grid heater is you see all that build up on those grids and so even with that egr system you're going to have build up so you have to find ways to clean out that because that's obviously going to have negative effects on your engine long term so it's just a good idea to find ways to keep your engine lasting longer i mean these trucks are getting so much more expensive and we're back to how it was pre-2020 when when you bought a truck and drove off the lot, you lost ten, fifteen thousand dollars right out right out of the gate. We're there again. So yeah, I hope this video was helpful. Let me know you guys' thoughts in the comments down below. What do you do? I think that some people have great insight. And yeah, I think it's always good to hear from you guys as well. Hope you guys like the video. Be sure to subscribe to the channel and be on the lookout for the next video I do. See you guys soon.